Welcome, guys. Happy New Year to you. Oliver, single-seater aspirations, Formula One testing, McLaren Autosport BRDC award winner, but I guess commercial reality means that sports car racing is now for you. Um, there's a world championship, there's, a, there's, there's Le Mans to race in. It's a, it's a different but exciting avenue for you. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, you, know you progress through single-seaters and, uh, you know, I had a very successful career uh, through my single-seaters and, uh, you know, I've been very fortunate to join uh, Vodafone McLaren Mercedes um, and be one of their test drivers for the last uh, three seasons. So, you know, I'm really happy working with them. Uh, but, you know, I want to go racing and, uh, you know, get out on track and, you know, the opportunity to go and race uh, in LMP2 uh, with Jota Sport came up and, you know, I think it's a fantastic opportunity and I'm, you know, really looking forward to uh, starting working with the team. The sort of budgets you need for GP2, Formula Renault 3.5, which are sort of you know, pitched below F1, are simply ridiculous, aren't they? Yeah, it's huge. And, uh, you know, I've been, uh, you know, very fortunate in uh, that I had the Racing Steps Foundation support that allowed me to progress from up into British Formula 3. You know, even the budget in Formula 3 these days is, is a massive amount of money. And, uh, you know, without the Racing Steps Foundation, uh, you know, I may, it would have been a real struggle to progress. So, you know, I, I really have to thank them um, for allowing me to progress so quickly up until where I am today. And, uh, you know, and, you know, looking forward to uh, this opportunity. And uh, certainly, you know, I think racing in prototypes, the fantastic cars and, uh, you know, quick cars, and, uh, you know, very close races. And, uh, you know, it's a new challenge racing for, you know, over potentially 24 hours. Yeah. Le Mans's the big one, isn't it? That's the sort of the fulcrum of sports car racing, whether it's LMP1, 2 or GTE. That's the one every driver wants to do. Yeah, I think, I think outside Formula 1, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the biggest races out there. And certainly it's a race I've followed for many years. Um, and certainly one I've always wanted to, to race in. So... Uh, you know, the opportunity to go there this year is, is, is a great one. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll have a team uh, that's, that's capable of winning it. Sam, for you and, uh, and Simon Dolan, Jota's a, a relatively new team. A big coup to get someone with uh, Oliver's pedigree. Yeah, absolutely. We're, uh, you know, it's fantastic to have Oliver on board and we're very proud to have him with us. But LMP2 now is, it, it's no longer the sort of endurance format that it always was akin to being. It's an absolute sprint from start to finish. And... The ACO have done wonders and have got the balance of performance absolutely correct between the various chassis and engine manufacturers. And it really does come down to the teams and drivers to eat the most out of the car and having someone of Oliver's talent and speed on board is hopefully going to help us do well. I remember 10 years ago or so ago at Le Mans, if you finished LMP2, you won the class. It, it was a real sort of graveyard, wasn't it, of... Uh, of retirement. Yeah, absolutely. And now if you spend more than 28 minutes in the pits, you're nowhere. So, you know, that's how far it's come on in 10 years. Sort of a junior version of LMP1. It's, it's flat out from uh, start to finish. Yeah, no messing around. And the beauty of LMP2 is there's, there's more cars out there and the competition's closer because you haven't got the petrol-diesel divide that you have in LMP1. So you really have got 15 cars and all 15 cars are capable of winning the race and all 15 cars can be as quick as each other on any one lap. And of course, if the cars are good, and there are, there's a good number of them, you attract better drivers. Yeah, and I think, you know, point in case here with Oliver, when we started speaking with Oliver, it was, it was clear he was very keen to do something in sports car racing. And like you say, 10 years ago, someone of Oliver's calibre probably wouldn't have looked at LMP2, but now there's a lot of guys looking at it as a real stepping stone in their career and, and as a route to a factory drive with an LMP1 team. What car are you going to be running this year? And uh, tell us a little bit more about the, uh, the package. Well, we're back with Zytec. So we've got a very long and illustrious history with Zytec. I think we bought their first car they ever built back in 2005. And I think somewhere along the line, we've owned roughly half the cars they've ever made, which is either a good thing or a bad thing. But the Zytec Nissan package, I think, is, is the package to have. It's the most complete car in terms of going the distance in the race. Maybe not outright the fastest car on that one qualifying lap, which is why you have to employ the talents of Oliver. But for going the distance, the reliability and the ability of the car to maintain that speed over 24 hours, no doubt the Zytec Nissan package is the best one out there. Do you get support from Nissan? Are, are they involved 
in it day to day. We get fantastic marketing support from them in terms of everything they do surrounding the sport, surrounding Le Mans with the Nissan Delta Wing and with all their teams. But there's no financial sport or anything like that. But perhaps one day they could, they could get involved. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, I think there's uh, half the LMP2 teams are using Nissan engines and half of them would love that check from Nissan. So it's a, it's a small pot and a lot of people looking at for it. Yeah, you need to shine, don't you? Oliver, um, have you driven the car? No, not yet. The <laughs> um, first test is in February, so uh, you know, can't wait really to, to get out in it. The Le Mans series is, is in exclusively for LMP2 now, so you're not sort of picking up the scraps behind the LMP1s. You guys are out there fighting for for the overall race wins. Yeah, exactly. I think that's uh, you know, something that is very exciting to be challenging for the outright, outright race victory. And uh, you know, I think the, the races are going to be very close. As Sam said, uh, you know, it's, it's real, really a sprint race now, um, a three-hour race. And uh, you know, you've got to be flat out the whole way. The championship sort of fell over last year, didn't it? There were only a couple of rounds in the end. Uh, do we have promise of a, of a, a more sort of solid calendar for this year? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, driver turns to team boss. <laughs> yeah, that's for you, mate. No, absolutely. The, the ACO have worked very hard to keep the numbers up. They've moved the rules around slightly uh, to enable us to have more GT cars on the grid. And I think, you, uh, I think people would be surprised how strong the European Le Mans series is going to be this year. Are you still going to run GT cars? Because obviously you've run GT spec Astons in the past. Or is the sole focus on uh, LMP2? No, we still have GT projects. We have a GT project with Mazda that we're, we're still running. We have, uh, we're looking at a GT3 program as well with various manufacturers. So, yeah, the aspirations are still to do stuff in GT, but very much our primary focus is the Le Mans program, especially this year when, you know, we're putting obviously a lot of effort, given our drivers, into succeeding. Okay, guys, all sounds cool. Uh, best of luck for 2013. Uh, put your hands together for Oliver Turvey and Sam Hignett. Thank you, fellas.